for flying Lisa Airlines. We are taking off now for, of course, the Gold Coast of Australia. Strap yourselves in for it's going to be a little bit of a bumpy ride. Alright, so tonight, I'm your host Adam O'Brien here on Leave the Mold Podcast, brought to you by the one and only folks at Phantom Podcast Network, where we celebrate 1980s, 1990s, and even beyond that, to the 2000s and more, of course, action movies, and of course, just a little bit of retro, because retro is cool, right? Everyone's doing retro. Look at it. Disney's doing retro. DC's doing retro. All franchises are doing retro, and we do that here too, folks. Tonight, we're going to be talking about this bad boy right here, which I've only just been able to find, and is, of course, Sidekicks. Jonathan Brandis, um, martial arts, uh, adventure, uh, coming-of-age story as well, and, of course, has Chuck Norris in it. It's kind of a little bit like No Retreat, No Surrender, how the lead in that had this sort of imaginary hero in Bruce Lee. In this one, well, it's Chuck Norris for Jonathan Brandis. You've got Joe Piscopo in it as kind of a, uh, I suppose, a John Kreese character in this. Also, Mako, a fantastic actor, of course, was the star uh, alongside Al Schwarzenegger and Conan. Uh, Battle Creek Brawl, he was the Sifu to, of course, Jackie Chan's character, and many, many more, of course, if you have yeah, perfect weapon. I mean, the list goes on. This is a great flick, uh, much better than I anticipated seeing it, because I haven't seen it since VHS and Beta Max. That's how long ago this thing was um, out. Actually, it probably pre, uh, post-dates <laughs> Beta Max. Um, but it's a lot of fun. Of course, it's also got Julia Nixon's soul in it. Of course, you'll know her from, of course, Rambo and Babylon 5 and many other uh, movies and TV shows. We're going to get into that a little bit later tonight, uh, over the next 30 minutes, and we've also got a little bit of news on some uh, harder-to-find DVDs which have been released by a company out here in Australia which have already made it very clear. Things are drying up, folks. All right? So if you are trying to find hard media still, now is the time to get out there and do it because movies like Best of the Best 3 and 4, for example, you can't get these anymore unless you get them now. Because they're not making any more prints of these. Because it's easier, faster, and cheaper for the companies to do it streaming. We all know this is the way of the world, and it's the way of almost every uh, business out there. Whatever's cheapest is need and easiest for them to get out there, that's the way they do it. So, before we get into all that tonight, how you can contact us here, of course, at the show is right here on the phone. <laughs> The number you have dialed has been changed. The new number is... G'day, man. How you going? Follow the legal mullet here on Phantom Podcast Network's master channel at fpnet.podbean.com or subscribe on the Podbean app where you can find all the shows. Blood of Kings, a Highlander podcast, Culture Clash, a weekly look at pop culture, new look at making tricks, a Star Trek fan podcast, and also check out The Mullet Guild, a look at the Dune universe from me, the Lethal Mullet. You can also check out this show and all the others like What a Piece of Junk, a Star Wars podcast, Type 40, a Doctor Who podcast, Good Evening, an Alfred Hitchcock podcast, and much, much more. All on FPN. You can follow on Apple, Spotify, iHeartRadio and all podcatchers. Make sure you follow me, The Lethal Mullet at The Lethal Mullet on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. Or on Twitter. It is of course at The Lethal Mullet on the socials. You can also follow us on fpnet.podbean.com where you'll be able to find of course on there too a lot more of the um, shows over there like Blood of Kings, a Highlighter podcast Culture Clash, looking at the week's uh, movies, TV, film, comic books, you name it, it's all in there with, of course, the founders, Kevin and Kyle. We've also got What a Piece of Junk of Star Wars podcast. Over there, you can find that with Derek and Scott. And now looking at The Mandalorian in Season 2, which is just now launched. So go and check that out. You've also got um, Making Treks, a Star Trek fan podcast with myself and, of course, Mark. Part, of course, Trek Tuesdays, which you're going to find on FPN getting uh, even busier now with Discovery back and obviously 
uh, Lower Decks, many other things. That's also with the Union Federation podcast, which you can find those on Tuesdays. Most Tuesdays we've got both of them uh, launching on there, so you get a double dose of Star Trek. Go and check that out. That's, of course, with Kevin and Kyle and a host of other guests that join them on their shows as well. That is geared towards the newer Star Trek, whereas, of course, Making Treks, a Star Trek fan podcast, is aimed at deep dive into the, of course, lore of Star Trek and, of course, the older shows, which, of course, are part of the legend. Also, of course, the Mullet Guild, the Dune Fan Podcast, that is now cranking out. We're going to have more coming your way with, of course, well, I've got a little book here, folks, that just arrived last week, and that is, of course, Dune, the Duke of Caladan, written, of course, by the son of Frank Herbert, Brian Herbert, and, of course, Kevin J. Anderson. So, started to dig into this as a set about a year before they go away to Arrakis, where, of course, House of Trades is embroiled in yet another plot to jeopardise their chance of leadership, of course, of the known universe. So we're checking that out on the Mullet Guild and reviewing it. So probably over two episodes, and um, we'll put it out there to Kevin and Brian. If you want to come on any of those episodes and uh, chat, of course, they're dev pals and um, amazing writers, folks. Work is just amazing. So also you can catch um, the shows on uh, any form where you can catch podcasts, of course, Stitcher, you can find it on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, which is probably one of the most popular, and of course, Spotify now, folks, Spotify's everywhere, so you, if you haven't got it on Spotify, definitely subscribe to it there, and we'll get rocking and rolling. All right, so we're going to dip into it now as we're live here, into the news. So the Now it's time for the latest action news from the cinema and martial arts movies and more, all here on the Lethal Mullet Podcast. News is, yes, there's a company out here which basically has prop-up stands in uh, many of the different shopping centres you can go to. Down here at the Gold Coast, they do it at um, the Runaway Bay uh, shops down here. They also do it all over uh, the southern end and all into Brisbane as well, into the Logan City region. You can find these stands and, of course, these harder-to-find canon movie films and others. One of those, of course, is one that um, has always put out things like uh, you've got the first three seasons of a tour of duty through these guys, and you can get them at $10 a season, so it's very affordable. All right? But movies like these, so, folks, bear with me. One I have not seen since TV in the 1980s, and that is, of course, No Mercy. This, surprisingly, was a lot better than I remembered. Of course, it stars Richard Gere and, of course, Kim Bassinger. And this is basically a hard-boiled thriller and a bit of a, a chase sort of film. So it has a uh, set in the, the, the southern areas of uh, New Orleans, I believe, if I remember right, in the bayou and um, sort of the, the swampy areas of the U.S. And um, the bag on this is really interesting. Happens to be from a Bond film, folks. That's right, from the Timothy Dalton Bonds. And, of course, from the Punisher, Jerome Crabay is the bad guy in this one, too. Again, it's really, really well put together. This is a slick, uh, quite fast paced for the time action thriller. And Richard Gere is doing his best to do kind of a, an early Stallone, if you like. Um, you know, that sort of um, action role, I suppose. I think he was trying to get into that market. Um, but Kim Basinger actually, I think, um, compliments him very, very well on this. It's slick, it's fast-paced, it's awesome. We may cover it on this here show. Now, another one is the ultimate mullet movie. And you actually get reference to this in Sidekicks as well. Is of course, Hitman. Look, it's Chuck, folks. Chuck. No, not Chuck Wagner. No, it is the Chuck Man. Chuck Norris, that's right. Carlos Norris, the man. And, of course, in this one, he plays a Hitman who's basically an undercover cop. Um, believed to have been dead, and then he was killed by his uh, former partner, who is Michael Parks. You know, Michael Parks, the late, amazing Michael Parks, who, I mean, just been in almost every Tarantino film uh, before he passed. And, uh, you know, talking through, to, yeah, where's that, where's that Serengeti sunglasses? Come on now. That's basically <laughs> the same role in this as well. Uh, although he doesn't have the grey hair yet, so that's. That's how old this movie is. And, of course, Chuck's got a very Chance Boudreau look in this. The mullet, he's got um, uh, the uh, trench coat. It's in that period. Um, but he's also sort of doing like he had been doing in a number of his films. Directed by Aaron Norris, of course. There we are. Um, 
you're really trying to, I think, invoke a little bit of the lessons of karate and um, just, you know, growing up, I think is the thing. In this one, you get that as well. And it's quite well put together for what it is. Um, there's no real um, uh, other thing than this that is basically a cop trying to get out of um, his situation. It's tough, but I tell you what, Chuck looks the best you're ever going to find it, probably since uh, Lone Wolf McQuaid. Bloody good movie. All right, so the best of the best. I still got to review these yet, folks, but yes, you can get it in a double pack. Um, and this one is, of course, best of the best uh, three, no turning back, and best of the best four without warning. Philip Bree, of course, directed these ones after the first two was such a, a great success in the 90s. And these two, um, you got Gina Gershon in the first one and uh, Ernie Hudson, of course, from uh, The Crow and, of course, Ghostbusters in the second. Uh, other stars you got in this, Tobin Bell. Uh, you've also got Paul Gleason <laughs> and Art LaFleur, folks. Wow, future cop, Art LaFleur. Mm. Fantastic. Of course, Air America. Let's not forget that one, folks. Uh, the other one was the special edition, of course, Ford Fairlane. That's right, Andrew Dice Clay. The awesome Andrew Dice Clay. Look, back in the 80s, this was a thing. Not politically correct by any standard today, obviously, uh, but it's a Rennie Harlan movie. And this is how he got into Die Hard, was doing this uh, movie because it was so well done, well put together. This is great. It's got a really good commentary from back in about 2003 that he did. And... Um, of course, you have the music uh, video of Cradle of Love in it as well. Uh, again, great flick. And you get to see Jimi Hendrix's guitar. Strung upside down for a left-handed genius. Upside down. That's like the fat, fattest slinky string down the bottom. Not I'm on top. Just absolute genius. Another one is, of course, Burt Lancaster and Kirk Douglas's Tough Guys. Now, this is a great little flick too. This is one that um, I haven't seen in a long while. Probably saw in cable TV, early 2000s, something along those lines. This is actually a lot of fun. Now, Dana Carvey plays uh, the parole officer in it too. You get Eli Wallach. <laughs> it's kind of like this deranged hitman uh, following these two ex-cons who leave uh, prison after 30 years. And again, what do they do? They get in trouble and, of course, they resort to crime. And it's good. It's really well done. Um, then we also, of course, have uh, Tour of Duty, which we have talked about earlier in the year in this season of uh, Lethal Mullet Podcast. But we're going to go back to that in uh, a couple of, um, probably January, maybe a couple of months' time. I would say January, because we've got so many shows planned with Kevin and with Lee Fillingsness as well coming back uh, for some other shows. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the latest ones too, Brotherhood of the Wolf. We've got quite a, back, uh, quite a backlog of stuff that we want to talk about, particularly uh, after uh, getting those bigger shows out of the way. So we're looking at Tom Selleck movies in the next couple of weeks, which uh, we haven't quite recorded yet, so that's on the way. We're looking at Runaway with Kevin, uh, that great science fiction action movie that um, obviously Tom put together in the 80s with Michael Crichton. Then we're also going to be looking at Quigley Down Under. Now, if you haven't seen it before, this is what it looks like. Quigley Down Under. This is a Western classic. It even says, Sex Sheridan Classics. If you ain't seen this one, you ain't seen a Western, folks. Shot in Australia. Come on now. Shot in Australia. Would you look at that? It's a Sharps Buffalo Rifle. I ain't seen that before. I heard that was really good and powerful with experimental bullets. Well, apparently they are. <laughs> Actually, believe it or not, when we get into Quigley, we'll go into a little bit of the lore about, of course, his legendary weapon, because that's part of the mystic of the character. Uh, this sort of uh, legendary character who never carried a sidearm. His sidearm was what he's carrying with him. <laughs> so uh, we'll get into that. And Tom, of course, is an advocate for um, uh, part of the NRA, part of the rifles and stuff like that. Um, so we'll get into that. Obviously, he's got a great bad guy, just hot off of the heels of uh, Die Hard, Alan Rickman in that one. And, of course, Laura San Giacomo, who pretty much steals the movie, um, this is a fantastic movie, directed by Australian Simon Winsor. Now, you may know that name, Simon Winsor. Where did I hear that name before? Well, you heard it because The Phantom, which was shot here on the Gold Coast, folks, that's right, and in Thailand, and probably Hawaii too, I think. But that one was shot by Simon Winsor, the biggest Phantom fan in Australia, apart from, of course, the man himself. Well, Billy Zane, may not be Australian, but he's living out here at the time, folks. 
quickly. So we'll get into that uh, in the month. And we're also going to, in the final week of uh, November, look at Magnum PI, which we've been kind of wanting to do for a long while, but you guys asked for it, so we'll do it. Alrighty, mate. Time to go down to the pub for a pint, and chat, action movies and more. Here on the Lethal Bar. Alright, let's get into the Lethal Bar and enjoy a brewski. That's right, genius idea that. <laughs> Alright, Sidekicks. It's a 1992 film. It is an action comedy. There is elements definitely of comedy. I mean, um, the film itself lays itself out as basically a fighting sort of a film, a coming of age story for Jonathan Brandis's character. Uh, and it's a bullied kid, basically. It's a, it's a kid that's been harassed from uh, every circle that he faces, whether it's school, home life, no matter what. And he's asthmatic. So this is one of the things, as an asthmatic myself, I really got into this film when I was a kid. Uh, it's set in Houston, Texas, and his father's played by, of course, Bo Bridges from Stargate. Yes. And, of course, from the Bridges family, from uh, Father Lloyd, legendary family and um obviously just the, the talent that these guys have you know uh, jeff and Bo, and just the family at large lloyd as well obviously too <laughs> uh you know it's funny about his father i've got to say this you know a little sort of sidetrack here his father i always knew from uh the, the hot shots films obviously um being playing the president and of course you know he played it so straight that's what made it so funny a little bit like, um, I suppose, the Loaded Weapon films and um, Naked Gun. Always played for, obviously, the, the laughs, but played so straight, <laughs> like Leslie Nielsen would do. Um, but Bo has always been that sort of compassionate um, actor that you kind of always, I think, the centre of the film can always come back to. Uh, and in this, too, he's playing a, you know, a widowed father, one that is working very hard to uh, put uh, you know, the food on the table and keep the lights on at home, all that sort of stuff. And, of course, you know, as, as anyone that's out there working these days too knows, there's not a lot of time left over in the week when you're working so flat out. And, of course, so that makes a bit of a distant strain on the family relationship between himself and, of course, Barry, uh, played by, of course, uh, the great Jonathan Brandis in this. So this is really, uh, you know, it's about um, the boy coming to terms with facing his fears, uh, facing his bullies, those that are uh, hurdles to him. And, of course, then he goes into his dreams, if you like. And it's this vivid imagination he has of being a sidekick to an amazing action hero. And that is, of course, by the real Chuck Norris. <laughs> and so we've got some really interesting scenes in this movie where basically they're taken from the, the Chuck film. So The Hitman is actually one of the films that's referenced in the movie itself. Missing in Action is another one that's sort of referenced in the film as well. Uh, and then there's the, the fight films that he's done and stuff like that too. So, and, and again, it's it's really playing on that, um, you know, uh, I suppose, angle of um, Chuck's character and um, it kind of humanises the film in a way that you wouldn't expect. I mean, this is not your huge budget, massive uh, film, but it was one that definitely, I think, strikes at the soul of, you know, like who, who trains in martial arts, all that sort of stuff too. Um, part of his journey in this, Barry goes around and tries to actually uh, better himself by doing training. So he trains with uh, Noreen Chan's father. Now, Noreen Chan is played by Julia Nixon Song, of course, of uh, Rambo First Blood Part 2 and, of course, Babylon 5. She is fantastic, as always. She's always the heart and soul of the movies, TV show she's in. Uh, she draws you in. She's not only is she an absolutely beautiful and amazingly talented um, uh, person, she's really, I think, you know, somebody that you can uh, relate to in any situation that's going to pull you down to where the heart is. And in this case, she's figured out what Barry needs. is a bit of tough love and also just a little bit of confidence. And so she helps um, Barry's father. And uh, from then, they kind of, they kind of find their way. And it's um, as he's facing the bullies like Randy Cellini, played by John Buchanan, who actually does really, really seems to relish this role <laughs> uh, and plays it well, um, who's also uh, somebody that knows a bit of martial arts. So Randy, trained by uh, a guy by the name of Kelly Stone, this dojo owner is basically a John Kreese knockoff. Right? And when we see it, it's kind of a little bit overdone, although the actor doing it, 
I think, you know, is really playing it for the comedic beats as well. And that is, of course, Joe Piscopo. Well, Joe, out here in Australia, we don't know too well, I suppose, um, from that market. Uh, he's a very well-built uh, actor, uh, one that's kind of a, that, that straight presence. It could have been an action star, I suppose. Um, but he's been on TV, and um, uh, I do believe he's on Saturday Night Live too. So he's kind of got the comedic background already. Uh, so I think that's kind of coming through the role a little bit. But uh, particularly the facial expressions, when he gets hit, he's like, rah, rah, you know, all that sort of stuff. Uh, and it's played quite well. And of course, then we have Mr. Lee, um, uh, Mako in this. And Mako's kind of almost playing uh, the same sort of beats from the big brawl slash Battle Creek brawl, where, of course, he was uh, training uh, Jackie Chan. And you know, he plays it sternly, but with a sense of love. And, of course, he runs the Chinese restaurant, which um, uh, Noreen Chan and, um, obviously, Jerry uh, all come together in, too. And so, again, it's that coming-of-age story with some amazing scenes uh, with, of course, um, you know, the character of Barry going through the beats of facing his fears. Then, in between that, uh, really, I think, um, going through these vivid dreams of, hey, Chuck, let's go on another mission. <laughs> and Chuck Norris really, uh, you know, is, is great in this. Obviously, he's produced the movie, and when he comes through into these scenes, you know, it's like he's dragging the, the viewer in to those movies. It's kind of almost like a, a you know, a, I suppose us in the world of Chuck through the eyes, of course, of Randis' character as well. We also have uh, Danica McKellar, which you might know from The Wonder Years. That's right. Uh, she would have been a couple of years prior uh, to doing The Wonder Years at this stage. And, of course, um, we know her as uh, the love interest of that show. Also, for the amazing uh, Highlander series, one of the, the first uh, bad guys in that series, first episode, uh, was an actor by the name of Richard Mole. So Kevin and, uh, obviously, Lee will know this very, very well. First episode, he comes in, he has his... Um, the fight scene is straight away with Lambert, of course, being the first episode. And uh, so anyone's watched season one of Highlander, the TV series, you know exactly what I'm talking about there too. But uh, again, he he's kind of playing in this a, a, a bully character to a certain point, but he's trying to get Brandis' character to really respond to um, not using asthma as an excuse to at least exercise and better yourself physically. Uh, which is something we can all learn as well. And then later, when he actually faces the bully in this, uh, he gets the thumbs up, pretty much says, mate, well done. You know? And so you can kind of see he's egging him on to not just sitting on the sidelines and just letting life pass by. So there's a lot of little things in this that really make this film, um, I think, you know, something that people should really watch. Oh, look, wrong one. <laughs> this one. Um, and again... The only drawback, before we get into what I really think of the movie, is the quality of the film. All right? So they haven't prettied this film up any. Not at all. This is literally just, from the VHS, uh, the picture quality is rubbish. <laughs> uh, I literally am watching this on fumes of nostalgia alone. In terms of quality, yeah, this, they really need to get this not just from a VHS master, they need to find where Chuck's got the original print and just go to town. And obviously Aaron Norris as well, uh, who's obviously directed a lot of these films too. Now, in this, the Washington Post has said, Sidekicks, a lively action comedy with a playful sense of humour and an undercurrent of fantasy. And I think fantasy is, is exactly what the Washington, oh, sorry, the Houston Post, there you go. Wrong quote. <laughs> but what the Houston Post said there is, is nailed it. It is fantasy. All right? This is, is really driving on the folks of those early canon films, you know, um, even before Delta Force, all those sorts of things that uh, Chuck was putting together. They're kind of in that market. So if you haven't seen that, that's sort of where we're going to. Another one from uh, the Dallas Morning News says, it's wish fulfillment fantasy has the right touch of whimsy as well. And that's what makes it such a, a bit of more of a, a family film. It's a teen-friendly sort of one. Now, there's quite a bit of martial arts involved. It's obviously got touches of Chuck's own Tang Sudo in there. Um, there's also um, a lot of kata and stuff like that. Towards the end of the film, we get to see uh, Noreen Chan go through those moves of doing kata, and there's weapon kata. So you see Nunchaku, uh, double Nunchaku, actually, even, 
practiced by both Chuck and, of course, Mako, and, of course, Brandis as well. And it's, it's actually done quite well. As somebody myself who, who studied those uh, weapons, it's not an easy weapon to use, uh, particularly because it comes back. <laughs> you know, it's like using these, you know, like the, the Balasong knives and stuff like that. Doing, doing all, a lot of that work, um, you know, it, the thing is, if it's connected to another arm or something like that, that's going to come back and hit you. So same principle with Nunchaku as well, because it's going to come around and hit you in the head. And there's some great scenes when he's training out in the park and Mako is warned him, it's going to let you know when you've done something wrong. <laughs> and it's great because it is real. But when you get to see the final Carter when he's up against, um, obviously, the school of uh, Joe Piscopo's character and... Um, you know, it really, this, the Stone Dojo, really trying to edge it out with competition because they do win one of the Carter competitions uh, against uh, Noreen as well. Um, but at the same time, you know, we've got this great physical sort of presence. And the great thing too is Chuck's actually in those scenes for real. So we're sort of building up to meeting Chuck and then Noreen Chan goes over and says, hey, look, I'll come and meet um, this young boy. He's, he's, he idolizes you. And it's the impetus that he needs to sort of push him to that next level in the competition too. And that's great because when you get to see Chuck there, he's finally going, well, you know what? I know that Stone guy. I'm going to go up against him. Now, the fight against Stone, so we're talking about Joe Piscopo versus Chuck Norris, is played more for laughs than it is played for real. Um, and Chuck would just literally walk up and down that guy uh, when it comes to it. So, um, you know, it's played, uh, you know, with a sense of comedy particularly with the facial expressions. Um, you know, Chuck keeps it very straight, uh, but it plays well against Joe Piscopo as well. I think it's really, really well done. So uh, overall, let's do a quick look at some of the locations. This was done primarily in Houston, Texas. Um, it was shot in Lamar High School in Houston. They also used scenes from Tranquility Park. I'm guessing that's where they did a lot of the, the Nunchaku training and stuff like that too. Uh, the Waltham Theatre Centre, I'm guessing that was when the competition went into place. Williams Waterwall, Allen's Landing, and the Texas Southern University as well. Now, the film itself didn't do really well, um, you know, overall. It's, uh, critically, it was uh, a lot of negative reviews against this film. Um, you can go by Rotten Tomatoes if you really want to, folks. We don't do that here. We don't. No, no, no. Rotten Tomatoes is exactly that, rotten. <laughs> it's not a way to judge films. Um, but the the way we sort of look at it, and you know, look at uh, the general market of, you know, it wasn't a rip-roaring success in that way too. But it debuted at number two at the box office. So it did all right for what it was, you know. Um, but again, the film was a way to um, also, you know, get a, a sort of a presence of the goodness you can get from, not only physical exercise, but, you know, the best way to enlighten the body and uh, really push yourself is by exercise, martial arts, sport, whatever it is, and uh, to find a way to do it. And particularly the ending, too. You, you sort of you get a, a sense of this has helped better Jonathan Brandis's character, Barry, but then there's others coming up, too, and they face different hurdles, okay, different things in their lives, which are going to be exactly that, something to challenge. And the challenge is for us to pass, and that's part of what makes it such an interesting movie. Now, this in the Howlenbeck scale, where does it sit? Well, for me, it's around about a three, three out of five. Um, it's not a, an amazingly uh, well-crafted film in comparison to others of the time and stuff like that, but it's got a lot of heart and soul, and the actors really, really work their, um, you know, their talent in this film, really push to make this a success um now as i said the quality isn't exactly there it is a vhs uh, master rep basically it's taken there you've even got some of the static lines coming across the screen the sound quality is pretty good uh, the sound will give it that but uh chuck if you're listening out there today folks Chuck Norris, mate, you need to get us a better copy of this <laughs> we need to see a blu-ray well maybe it's only in australia we don't get it and I'm not surprised with the distribution in Australia that way too. So yeah, three out of five folks, definitely check it out. It is, uh, you know, it is a great film for what it is too. And of course, out of the Norrises, we do also see Eric Norris in the film too. 
those a bikey we call them out here bikey they're those guys in sons of anarchy aren't they i think <laughs> All right, folks, hope you enjoyed this short little episode. Of course, it'll be out on the podcast too in a couple of weeks' time, so go and enjoy that. Um, we've also got coming up some more live shows, which we'll be probably heading to YouTube soon, as Kevin and Kyle have hinted. We want to sort of get a bit of a presence of action movies there, uh, where they've been doing a lot of stuff there too. They're actually doing right now, as we speak, a Crow uh, episode as well, so go and check that out, because we know Kevin is a massive fan of Brandon Lee, and just that movie in particular, as we are as well. Uh, you actually could find an earlier episode of, um, I believe it was Couch Potato Theatre back in 2015 that uh, Kevin and I did on The Crow, uh, which is, again, an amazing commentary if you can find it out there too. All right, folks, I'm your host, Adam O'Brien. We'll catch you next time on the Leo Mole Podcast. Until then, have a great weekend. And whatever you do, go and check out these amazing films because they need your love. G'day folks, hope you're enjoying the great shows here on the Phantom Podcast Network. Be sure to check out all the great shows that we have on offer and subscribe on the master feed at fpnet.podbean.com. You can check Blood of Kings, a Highlander podcast hosted by Kevin the Raider Nerd Russell and Lee Fillingsis on that platform. You can also check out Culture Clash, which is the weekly look at pop culture hosted by Kevin and Kyle. Couch Potato Theatre, this is a cult classics and guilty pleasure podcast. Also, Time Warp, a fandom flashback show. Enzo, a look at the NFL, American football. Also, Good Evening, an Alfred Hitchcock podcast, looking at the great films of Alfred Hitchcock. Union Federation podcast, a Star Trek and Orville podcast, looking at Discovery, and of course, Picard, plus the Orville. But also, the Hair Metal podcast, looking at the great shows put on by the amazing bands back in the late 80s, their discs, their LPs, everything, all covering the fashion as well. Hosted by Kevin the Raider Nerd Reitzel. You can also check out Type 40, a Doctor Who podcast, hosted by Kevin and Dan Hadley, looking at all the eras of Doctor Who. You can also catch out What a Piece of Junk, a Star Wars podcast, an amazing show looking at Star Wars, hosted by Derek and Scott. And of course, our newest one, the amazing, The Mullet Guild. An offshoot of the Lethal Mullet podcast looking at Frank Herbert's Dune universe. This is like an encyclopedia for Dune, where I take you through and down into the rabbit hole of Frank Herbert's amazing space opera, the sprawling universe which is going to be brought to life by Denny Villeneuve and December 18. You can check out all the shows there. Be sure to also go onto the social platforms on Twitter at Fanpot Network. Let us know what you think of the shows and what else you can uh, look at there. You can also check out great articles that we put up through there that we share. Also check out on Instagram and Facebook, Phantom Podcast Network. Be sure to make sure that every Tuesday you check out the great work done by Making Treks as well. A brand new podcast looking at a deep dive of Star Trek hosted by myself, James Semple, and of course the ever popular and amazing writer of Star Trek and Star Wars, Mark Newbold. Go and check it out, folks, and we'll catch you next time here on the Phantom Podcast Network's The Lethal Mullet Podcast. Good afternoon, good evening, and good night.